Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Let's dive into today's conversation regarding life's myriad transitions and how we refine our responses in our relationships, our wellness, our households, our work, and in our practices. You are invited to learn and love and listen with me. Welcome to Practice You. Welcome back to the podcast. I have a new friend with me here today. Her name is Amina Altai. She's a career realignment coach. How many of us need that right now? She's a proud immigrant. She's a chronic illness advocate. There's something here for everyone, isn't there? You are also a leading coach to notable female leaders and impact-driven celebrities. Your mastery, Amina, is in connecting us to our brilliance, and I appreciate that. As a fellow woman who is trying to do the same, you are a woman of color. You are of Iraqi descent, and you often work with marginalized communities to help them realize possibilities in a way that honors their particular lived experiences. I cannot thank you enough for being here on the show today. Thank you. Elena, thank you for having me. It is such an honor and a joy. I'm a huge fan of your work. I mm. bought the Practice You journal for literally every human I know. Everybody oh, got it for gosh. Christmas that year. <laughs> oh, gosh. There's another one coming in 2024. Yay! Yes, yes. The third and final in that series. Okay, let's talk about you. You are among the 125 leaders to watch in the Success Magazine. You are a Forbes contributor. You are an entrepreneur magazine expert in residence. You've been featured in the New York Times, in Goop, on NBC, Entrepreneur, and more. And you're working on your first book, which is entitled The Ambition Trap. Thank you very much. <laughs> it is kind of a trap. Um I just kind of want to talk to you a little bit about what it is that lights you up, how you got to the place that you have reached, and provide some value to our listener who might be searching for a new career, who might be kind of at a loss right now for where to turn, who might really want to do some work with marginalized communities. Um, teach us how you got here, first of all, from where you began. Thank you for that question. And, you know, just going back to what you said about what lights me up, really, I believe that doing work that we love in a way that honors our bodies and who we are in the world is our birthright, but it isn't available for all of us because of systems of oppression or our lived experience or our mindset. And so I really want to help people live into the great work of their lives in a way that feels really aligned with who they are. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. And I got to this work because for a really long time, I actually felt terrible in my career. I entered the workforce not so consciously. I grew up in a family system that really sort of valued my doing versus my being, my contribution over kind of who I was in the world. And I just took that into the workplace. And I was bouncing between entrepreneurship and corporate America and back again and just never really happy and just kind of cementing my place in the world as someone who was high achieving, but just chronically dissatisfied and then, you know, the universe works in mysterious ways. And then I, one year, had this sort of major health crash and burn. And at the time, I was running my own marketing agency. And I was, you know, boundaryless and deeply codependent and all the things and just taking care of my employees and my clients and my business partner and everybody but myself. And I burned out and I developed two autoimmune diseases. And I got a call one day from my doctor as I was going to work. And she said, you know, Amina, you need to go to the hospital right now. Don't go to work. Like you are days away from multiple organ failure because I had gotten so sick. And I call it my stop moment. The moment that I basically had to stop doing what I was doing. I had to really choose another way. I was at this fork in the road that was like, do you continue with your current relationship to work, success, ambition, and worthiness? Or do you choose another way and choose to live? And obviously, by virtue of the fact that I'm here with you, I chose another way. But, you know, it took a long time for me to really reconcile that relationship and, and learn new behaviors. And I went back to school to study coaching, to study nutrition, to study movement and mindfulness and all the things to just feel better in my own life. And then 
I just saw what was possible for me when I actually was more aligned, when I actually was coming from a place of wholeness instead of my wounds. And that's when I really realized this is something that I needed to teach. Hmm. Did you feel sick that day <laughs> when you were getting the call from your doctor? What did you feel like? You know, I had been sick for a while and I was the type of person that just didn't listen to my body. You know, I was getting all of these messages. Like I was getting the whispers before my body was shouting and I was just like, oh no, 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 I'm not going to listen. Just keep going. Just that was my mindset, right? I was like, don't listen to your body. Don't tune in, push, force, white knuckle your way forward until my body was like, actually, we're not available for that anymore. Wow. So serious. You then stopped. What did that stop look like for our listener who needs to stop right now? Yeah, I had a really honest conversation with myself and I actually stopped my own business. So I had co-founded this marketing agency, but I recognized that it was not a healthy space for me, you know, especially with my particular traits and the dynamic between me and my business partner. And so, you know, for a lot of people, that's a really tough decision. In many ways, it felt like a divorce of like leaving this business that I had built But I just knew if I kept going that way, I wasn't going to be who I really wanted to be in the world or even be in the world. And so a big part of the stop was actually leaving that unhealthy space that I had created for myself. Hmm. That's a rough choice to make. I have a feeling that we have at least one listener who will resonate with this and know that it's time to turn the page, close the chapter, and put a stop to things. And if that's you, Amina's a really good example for you. Um, Looking now at your website and what you're offering to folks like our listener, there's a a quite a wide swath of ways to work with you. I would love for you at this very early stage in our chat, just to enlighten our listener as to how people could work with you at this present time. So I feel really called to serve purpose-driven folks that really want to play all out for their dreams, that just know deep inside of them that they have something to contribute, like truly soul's calling, and they're here for it. And, you know, maybe they have been laboring in spaces not designed for them. Maybe they've built a business that doesn't feel really good for them. Maybe they feel stuck in a corporate job that just is sucking their soul, but they have golden handcuffs, and so they feel stuck there. And I so get it. You know, I've been there. My clients have been there. And, The way that I like to work with people is deep and fast because I believe that there are seasons when we grow incrementally and then there are seasons that we're available for radical change. And I'm a stand for radical and that you could change your life pretty quickly if that's what you desire. And so my signature program is a three-month program. And at the top of 2023, I'm actually launching a new group program that's a five-month program that is for People that feel called to step into the great work of their lives, whether it's their business or, you know, choosing a new role inside of somebody else's organization, but really honoring who they came to be in the world and their contribution. And so it's for people that already have a business and they want to scale it or want to realign their careers to take care of themselves, feel abundant and contribute in the way that they want to. Beautiful. I want to know two things. One is how you work with individuals, and two is how you work in groups. You know, there are lots of programs that people can take and lots of Mm -hmm. um, potential out there. And I chose to talk to you because I loved the way that you approached me. I love the look of your work. Mm -hmm. It's just what's true. That's what we get to see at these times. I've enjoyed the clarity and the brevity of our exchanges and the heartfelt quality of your languaging. Teach us how you work with individuals and then teach us how you work in groups to help people really step into what it is they're here to do. So I think underneath all of my work is sort of this five-part framework. So I believe that the great work of our lives sits the intersection of where our gifts are, what we value in this world, what we want to impact, what brings us joy, and our needs. And when we're building our work from that space and we use that as the lens to lay over every opportunity, every business, we create our work for a lifetime and not just a season because it's really the truth of who we are. And that underpins everything from one-on-one to group. And when people come to me, oftentimes they'll say, you know, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do in this world. So like, how can I even think about scaling it? 
And I believe that we all have exceptional abilities, literally things that we channel, things that we are here to contribute in a way that others may not be able to contribute. And my job is helping unearth that for people. So my gift is being able to see other people's gifts and really bring it to the surface. And then how do we get on the court with it in a way that honors who they are? So you know, let's say, for example, you know, you are a coach and you went to traditional ICF coaching schools or whatever it is but you just know that you have your own teachings to get on the court with. What I help people do is really bring that to the surface based on their experience, based on who they are, based on all of their knowings and what's really served them and bring that to the world in a way that really connects with their bigger life vision. And so I'm leveraging things from, you know, neuroscience to positive psychology to traditional, you know, marketing practices, because that was my background. It really is such a melange of all these different modalities. And it's so specific to the individual, especially in that one-on-one scenario. And then when it comes to group, I never do big groups. Intimate is really what I love. And so my groups are always, you know, six to eight people max, because I want it to feel like you're still having a one-on-one experience, but then you also get to benefit from the amazing energy brilliance of the group as well. So leverage is very similar curriculum. And I try to keep it as intimate as possible because I think intimacy is where the depth is and intimacy is where the catalytic energy is. Mm, Well said. Thank you. Really cool. Um, I know that I have a fair number of people who are serving as mentors and coaches who listen to this podcast, so I'm hopeful that this will be of use, of utility to you if you're listening. When it comes to the sort of larger conversation afoot regarding coaches, mentors, what they're charging for their services, it's a conversation that I'm always having and I'm always encouraging people to charge what they're worth and to not shy away. Um, How do you address that with your people with whom you're working? How do you make sure that they are, in fact, charging for their 20, 30 years of experience or 10 years of experience? They're charging for their time. How do you make sure that they're not shying away from earning what they should? And I also want to say, like, in an environment where... um, we're heading into a recession or in a recession. Yeah, I think that's such an important caveat. So I have an atypical approach to pricing. Maybe it's not atypical. I don't know. But when I worked in the marketing world, there was all these formulas for how we'd arrive at our pricing. And when I first started my coaching business, that's how I approached it. It was a trap. It did not serve me. So when I work with my clients now, and even with myself too, I let their higher self drive the conversation around pricing. So we do some deep tuning into their future self or their higher self, and we invite them to share, to invite us into that conversation versus allowing our very cerebral parts of our brains to drive that conversation or a specific formula. And I work with a lot of people that are often changing their careers. Maybe they have 10, 15 years of experience in one area, and then they're coming to an area and they might be newer in that space. And what a lot of them do is they discount their experience. They're like, I'm new to this space. And it's like, well, hold on a second. You actually have 20 years of experience over here. So last year, for example, I worked with this amazing woman and she was a nutrition coach. But before that, she was a food scientist for 20 years. And she was one of the original healthy food scientists. She was behind you know, big companies like Pret-a-Manger and, um, you know, a lot of these sort of healthy food subscriptions. And so she came to the space and she was like, well, I'm brand new as a health coach. And it's like, well, actually you've been operating in this space. You've been a thought leader in this space for so long. Like you are not new at all. Like let's claim your sovereignty. And I also love the perspective. I think you and I have a friend in common, Jesse Johnson, and Jesse says that prices are portals. And I believe that to be true. I believe that prices are an invitation for both those of us who are pricing it and those that are on the receiving end. And it's an opportunity for us to step into our bigness. And I actually did some work with Jesse and Jesse's pricing is, uh, I once described it as spicy because it was an invitation for me to actually show up even bigger. And so I think prices can be an invitation for us to play all out for our dreams and also for the service provider to show up so fully that we can help the other person on the other side transform in a way that they might not be able to. But I want to address what you said about a recession, because that is real and true. And so when I'm working with folks, one of the things that we do is really look at the entirety of the business model, right? So we don't want to necessarily discount our one-on-one because 
those are our heartbeats, right? That's our time. That part is really challenging, I think, to discount, and I'm not an advocate for that. But we can have lots of areas of our business model, right? From the free options to the freemium to the low priced to the mid priced, and then our high end. And so across our business model, we want to create access for people at multiple entry points on their journey. So, for example, in my business, I have tons of free stuff, like tons of free videos, free worksheets for people that might be new to this work. Uh, like you, I have a journal, right? So my journal, I think, is $15. And so, like, you know, that's a nice digestible price point if you want to dip your toe in, but you're not ready to go into coaching. I have a digital offer, and then we go into group, and then we have one-on-one. And so for those that are architecting their business model and they want to create accessibility, but without diluting their offering or putting themselves in the space of burnout, just create multiple entry points. I also really love Kelly Deals' work on economic justice. So one of the things that she talks about is those of us that are called to service-driven work, we kind of take the onus of economic justice and we put it on our own shoulders. And what she means by that is, is like for a lot of, you know, let's say uh, those of us that are called to service, we're like, okay, I have to fix this problem, fix the injustice, fix the fact that some people don't have access to capital. And so we uh, discount our offerings and But basically, it's a system-wide thing. We need to be in this conversation together. So basically, putting the onus of that on ourselves and discounting our services doesn't serve the greater whole, right? We want to be in this conversation all together, creating access and multiple entry points as a society, not just as individuals. I appreciate all of that. Thank you. Um, That was a lot. (laughs) The the reference to Jesse's spicy pricing is awesome. Uh, (laughs) Jesse is somebody I respect very much. Yeah. and has done some great work with dear friends. You know, I appreciate also the aspect um, about the recession and you know how people can enter into your work or any mentor's work at, at various different price points and begin to get a taste for what it means to, first of all, be a student, to take your own self-development seriously, and then you know, for what it might look like to actually serve somebody else and to explore that for yourself. A lot of us have redefined ourselves many times. I've redefined myself, gosh, probably six times over the course of my adult life, these 30 years, and there's no stopping me now. I'm reinventing myself again and doing other things uh, on the go forward. So I really appreciate this conversation a lot. I think it's extremely practical and also, um, you know, much needed, not being had. I also really appreciate you sharing about your reinvention because I think that's such an important thing for us to witness because I think so many of us have felt that careers have had to be linear or that if we're constantly reinventing, it means something about ourselves. And I feel similar to you of just perpetually in the conversation of becoming. And I think it's so beautiful that you share that with us and we get to witness it. Hmm. Thank you for that. It does feel scary, actually, at times. Mm. And then I realize that, of course, yes, what you're saying is true. And it's really good for uh, someone like me or someone like you to consistently be evolving, consistently developing your studentship, our studentship, and creating what needs to come through, really. Mm. Yeah. So beautiful. Um, Last couple of notes. I want to make sure that I share your program specifically because I think this podcast will emerge right around the right time or, you know, perhaps a little bit later, but at least somebody knows where to look. Will you please give us the website URL as well as anything that our listener needs to know about the ways to work with you? So you can learn more about me and my programs at aminaaltai.com. It's A-M-I-N-A-A-L-T-A-I.com, and the spelling will likely be in the show notes. And you can learn about my program, Pivot to Purpose, which is the group program that I mentioned earlier. And you can learn all about my offerings in that destination, too, and also on Instagram at Amina Altai. Thank you so much for this. Anything else you'd like to add before we close? Amina, I really appreciate your time, and I don't want to use too much of it. I always love to leave the generosity. And so I would love to offer whomever is listening, if it feels of service, I have a free passion and purpose worksheet that is. So if you're in the space where you are at a new reevaluation point and you're starting to think about what is next for you and what looks like more alignment, um, I'd love to offer that to your listeners in case it's of service. 
Um, and then I also have a ton of free worksheets on my website to everything from how do we navigate burnout right now to how do we overcome overwhelm to our money mindset. So I invite you all to please take advantage of those free resources. There's some juicy stuff there. Um, and I hope it's of the highest service to you all. Thank you so much for all of that. Thank you. Thank you. I think Amina, for our listener, Amina is a good example, a really good example of someone who has emerged from the world of being a woman of color in this country and is supporting other women in a very real, thoughtful, generous way. And I appreciate your time today, Amina, and I appreciate your presence here today. Thank you so much. So grateful for you and so grateful for everyone tuning in. Thank you. Mm-hmm.